proximity warnings are going off, so I just turned them off. Uh, I hit my chin. On, I need a bigger tire on this. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce two long-term trucks at TFL. A new Nissan Titan Pro 4X and a brand new 2022 Ram 1500 Backcountry. Over the coming months, we'll be doing many, many tests right here on TFL Off-Road and also on TFL Truck, towing, acceleration, fuel efficiency. But this episode is all about how they do off-road in the Rocky Mountains. I'm gonna run both of these trucks over several obstacle articulation sections, some rocky terrain and also climbs. I'm gonna do the Titan first and then you'll see the ramp right behind it. Let's go do it. And guys, the main reason why I wanted to compare these two trucks off-road is because they're both red. Uh, no, actually no. <laughs> I wanted to compare them because they can be configured almost at the same price. They're both V8 powered off-road trucks and uh, there's about $4,000 between them but they have different suspension systems, slightly different uh, ways of doing things. The first test is this articulation test where I'm gonna try to get this truck upset and then I'm gonna do the same thing in the Ram and see how they, how they compare. So this is basically a ditch crossing where one wheel is in the air. Sorry about my proximity warning system there. And this kind of shows full articulation. The Titan is using a leaf spring rear axle, which is different from the coils in the Ram. And I'm in four low and I want to try to climb and see what happens with no locker so this was no locker let me try one more time these two are actually very very closely matched this titan is a crew cab of course it's a pro 4x which means it's more of a premium truck near the top of the lineup for titan it has special suspension with bilstein chocks 33 inch tall tires and a v8 engine under the hood so I want two wheels off the ground and then two wheels on. And I don't have a rear locker enabled. The traction control system is really working. Actually, this is pretty cool. Uh, let me see what happens if I use a rear locker. <laughs> there, I'm in the air again. And then once again, this is showing articulation. I'm gonna enable the rear locker. Let's see if it's gonna be easier. Oh, it just walks right up beautifully and I didn't touch anything so enough clearance even with these side steps so the first test in the Titan pass at the end of the video I'll tell you exactly the prices for both of these trucks the sticker price I am approaching test number one obstacle one in the Ram the suspension here is quite different. It's a five link rear with coil springs in the back versus leaf springs in the Titan. I'm gonna try to put myself in the same place where I was with the Nissan so you guys can compare visually the not just the articulation capability but also you know, the traction and how it resolves this problem of two wheels in the air which I think I'm about done here so once again this is four low axle unlocked and I think this is the most precarious I can make it right now so let me see this is once again unlocked Wait a minute, that was way easier. In the Nissan, the traction control system was working, it seemed quite hard. Right here in the Ram, 
uh, I it didn't feel like it was working very hard. And this Rem 1500 Backcountry is something all new for 2022. It's a special package. It's a little bit more value-minded, or at least it can be in this case. It's basically a big horn, which is sort of in the lower end of the spectrum of the trim levels on the Ram 1500. But it also has a V8. This is the Hemi with e-torque. It also has a slight suspension lift and off-road worthy tires. Uh, yeah, I cannot wait to see exactly how this new package, this backcountry, performs on all of our obstacles. Let me try one more time with, with the locker engaged. Okay, the locker engaged, that was pretty simple to do. Once again, going to drive. And I would say it should be just as easy. Yeah. Uh, so Ram, in my opinion, just based on this test, handled this uh, first obstacle better than the Titan. So point Ram. The second test is a test of approach, breakover and departure angles. And I'm going to be using these uh, rocky ledges as steps where I'm climbing over them. One thing I'm noticing in this Titan is and by the way i'm at full street tire pressure i did not air down this trail is not too difficult for me to start airing down but i'm noticing that the titan is a little bit bouncy on these rocks even with the bilstein shocks so i'm gonna try to approach in four low my cameras came on which is great my proximity warnings are going off, so I just turned them off. Uh, and, oh, ooh. I hit my chin. Uh, okay, let me back up. What I really like about the tire package on the Nissan Pro 4X is that it's large. It's basically just over 33 inches in diameter. It's a general grabber. Um, it's not super aggressive, but in the past it has worked out pretty well. This truck also has a skid plate in the front, a really giant one. That's really great, some extra protection underneath. But another thing I'm not a huge fan of is this step because it does hang down low and I don't think it's really necessary uh, for this particular package. Uh, we may, I may actually remove it in the future because we do have this truck for a little while and run it again and see what other obstacles I can go over. It's a good thing I have a giant skid plate there. Okay, I'm going to the right, which is a slightly different line. Which helps me climb these steps. And now I need traction. I also need the breakover angle. Traction from these grabbers are actually, is actually very good. Because I'm going very slowly and making it very, very difficult for this truck. So, the Titan continues to have a little bit of an issue with front approach angle. Even though it is an off-road model, it's the most off-road capable truck that Nissan currently offers from the factory, but I think it just needs a little bit more lift. Maybe a Warrior package uh, would help. Um, you know, maybe a slightly wider body, just to have a Pro 4X Warrior with a little bit better clearances, maybe a slightly bigger tire, and I think this truck would be superb. These two trucks have approximately the same ground clearance, although right here in the Ram, the tires are just smaller diameter. Nonetheless. I'm approaching obstacle number two, which is really approach departure and breakover angle test. And in this test, uh, the Titan, as you saw, touched its front skid plate, which is massive. I don't have that here. In fact, I have a soft plastic chin with a deployable chin behind it for efficiency. And if I bend it and damage it, uh, that would be bad. It's, this is not a Rebel or a TRX. It does not have enough protection up there. So I'm gonna use the help of uh, my trusty camera friend 
um, to see how close I can get. The tire on this backcountry edition is a Falcon Wild Peak AT all-terrain tire. I like that the sidewall is a little bit more aggressive. What I don't like is that it's actually a 32 inch diameter and actually on this truck with a slight one inch lift in suspension um, it kind of looks a little bit odd. I want to see this wheel well filled out a little bit more and a larger tire of course with larger sidewall would be a lot better but this is what comes from the factory. And this is not a Rebel, so it does not have a big giant front skid plate, but this one does have the big sidestep that's very similar to the Titan, which I'm also not a huge fan of. It does have the steel one, and also another one near the transfer case, and also another one on the fuel tank. Heard something. Can I do it? It's climbing. <laughs> I can't believe this. The slight suspension lift on the ram actually helped. Now I'm concerned about my side steps. But these Falcons are also gripping quite well. And because this truck is about $4,000 cheaper, well, not just because of that, but because this truck is cheaper, I do not have 360 degree camera view, so I cannot, I do not have a lot of vision in the front, which is not ideal because I'm kind of pointing up the mountain. And but nonetheless, I negotiated it. I did not have to reposition. I might have dinged the little plastic piece, but in my view, this was pretty, pretty good. Now approaching obstacle number three. The third test is maneuverability test. And I'm gonna call this one the squeeze between two trees. It's a very technical uh, name, uh, but I do need to turn around. So as such, I need to get between these two trees. So let me see if I can do it. My cameras are on. It's helping me slightly with Seeing. Once again, my proximity warning is on. Jeez. I need to go into the system to permanently disable it. And now... So, maneuverability is good. But the clearances I'm a little bit worried about underneath. Hey, you did it! The Titan interior is a nice place to be because it's been recently redesigned. Really nice steering wheel. Because it's a Pro 4X, special touches of course with lava red Nissan badging, all the functionality here including your uh, cruise control settings. You do have 360 degree camera views. This is a nine inch screen here in the premium version of the Pro 4X. So yeah, a lot of technology. I, I really like how easy it is to actually shift into four low and I like the transmission shifter traditional nice four low it removes disables traction control system for the most part and puts me in low on the driver's side here on the left I have two very important switches my rear selectable locker nice hill descent control and also this um, special switch because this is equipped with Nismo off-road lights I can turn them off and on. This truck also has a really great stereo system by Fender and a panoramic sunroof. Keep going, let's go. There we have it. All right, I'm continuing to turn around. These full-size trucks, 
I mean, if this truck was any wider, I was just commenting on that. Um, you could get more travel, but it would also may not be able to fit through an obstacle such as this. So, it's, ooh, I just touched my sidestep. That's why I don't like these sidesteps on these trucks. Maneuverability is actually quite good, except my sidestep. Just have to be very, very careful. It's just a little bit sketchy here. I'm trying to inch my way down. I'm not using hill descent control here. I could. I just want to go super slow. Super, super slow. Make sure the truck can articulate over this terrain without damaging anything. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I'm close to that tree. Okay, done. Let's see back country. Your name means going camping off the beaten path. Maybe skiing in the back country. I need to get to the back country. Okay, so this is a maneuverability test and I'm trying to approach it in the same way as I did with the Titan. And I don't know if I have enough. I'm looking at my spotter. Just enough. So I felt like I felt like um, the Titan was a little bit easier to maneuver. Maybe because the Titan has cameras. Ooh! No! I'm touching! Oh! No! I did not touch here in the Titan. Oof. This wasn't ideal. I touched my sidestep. The backcountry package costs $2,695. Like I said, this is a big horn model to begin with, and then the backcountry is on top of it. And backcountry is also appearance package and also provides function for off-roading. Here on the inside, it's still a very comfortable place to be. Very clear gauges as before. Nicely wrapped steering wheel. This does have a smaller screen option because this is a big horn edition, like I said. But I do have heated and uh, heated seats, heated steering wheel. And then on top of that, of course, the exterior two-tone paint, but also the blacked out wheels, the tires, the skid plate packages. I also have four wheel drive off-road pages right here in the center. I can monitor what the truck is doing. And here's my control for the transmission. I'm not a huge fan of the knob, but I'm used to it now. And I'm in neutral, so I can switch to four low. This does have four wheel drive automatic mode, which is nice. And at the same area, I have my rear axle lock and hill descent control system. I like that it's in one place. In the Nissan, the, these two buttons are in a different place. I like that they're co-located here. And this truck does not have a 360 degree camera view, just a backup cam. Once again, a little bit more simple. And I'm surprised by this. This is the only backcountry badge on this truck. I would have figured Ram would put it also maybe on the back bedside or maybe the tailgate or maybe somewhere else as well. But it's a nice discreet touch. Now the two tree squeeze continues. Let me see what happens now. I really don't want to scrape any more side steps. On, I need a bigger tire on this. That would help. Come on. Ooh. 
I need to go look. Oh, I see. So it's those little um, brackets that hold the sidestep over. Let me crank a little bit more to the passenger side. Maybe I can avoid that rubbish. So maybe I do have a little bit less clear, clear, clearance with ground clearance with the ram. Definitely the Titan takes this test, number three. Back country, well I got there, just scraped my sidestep a smidge underneath so no cosmetic damage just a little bit of the bracket scrape so not too bad but once again if you don't have a super lifted truck which this isn't I would say you really don't need a sidestep going super slowly I wish I had a camera underneath my belly under the truck so I can see better what the obstacle is. I, I'm memorizing the obstacles and then I have to focus on that visual memory so I remember exactly what I'm about to go over next. I have just one more place. No, I cannot do anything else. I have trees on both sides. There you go. I was able to get down, but Titan did better here. No question about it. Under the hood of the Titan, you know this engine and you've seen this before. It's a 5.6 liter, they call it the Endurance V8. And with premium fuel, 400 horsepower and 413 pound-feet of torque. It's actually very torquey, very powerful. I am running premium fuel today and 9-speed automatic is backing up this engine. And of course, 4-wheel drive system with 4 low, which I'll be using today. For the final test, I'm gonna switch to 4 high. I'm gonna do the same thing in both trucks and see how it does when the going gets a little bit faster. The Bilsteins on uh, the Nissan, they are designed for kind of slow going. Stuff that I was just doing with a little bit of rock crawling. I don't know, it's, it's not specifically designed for faster speed like some of the other trucks such as the, well the Raptor, the TRX, with their adjustable life suspensions and shocks. So let's see how this does. This, this truck offers, because of the larger tire, a little bit more sidewall. So there's a little bit of cushion there, but there's also a bit of porpoising. Oh, as you can kind of tell, <laughs> there's some porpoising. So not ideal for faster running, but that's okay. These forest trails, you know, I don't have to pretend like I am in a side-by-side, -side, performance side-by-side, -side, flying over here at 45 miles an hour. You know, 10 or 15 miles an hour is just fine. And this is another very familiar engine, the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with e-torque in this case, which actually for 2022, does not cost anything extra. You can either have this or you can subtract it and just have a V8 as well. 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. Eight-speed automatic is backing up this engine. This is very familiar and tried and true powertrain now for Ram. And of course, also four-wheel drive system with four low is right here. Okay, so just as I did in the Nissan, I'm gonna go to four high for test number four, and it actually blips, blips the throttle a little bit, and it's nice and easy, no issue switching between four low or four high. It's a, just a pleasure 
Okay, now let me go a little bit faster to see how the suspension behaves. The Backcountry Edition Ram does not have name brand shocks. So it's not Bill Stein, it's not Fox, it's not Rancho, it's not any others, but it's basically Ram um, tuned suspension. Part of that is because of course the value of the truck. So I'm gonna pick up some speed. I'm going about the same speed between 10 and 15 miles an hour. And I'm trying to trying to figure out what it feels like. I can notice that there's less porpoising actually. I can feel some of the hits still, but in the Nissan, it was starting to porpoise back and forth to the point where I had to slow down quite a lot. In the Ram, that's not really happening, and I'm not sure if that's an artifact of the coil rear suspension, slightly different tuning, uh, maybe just the overall structure of the truck. But I feel a little bit more comfy in the Ram, actually. This is very subjective, I know. This is based on my perception. But I would give a slight benefit, slight win on this final test to Ram. So it's three to one. I promised you the pricing. The Ram, the way you see it here, MSRP is $56,670. The Titan Pro 4X with Nismo accessories and some other options, $61,345. So yes, the Titan is more expensive and both of them are already, you would say, are outside of the pricing reach for a lot of you. But, hear me out, of course there's more expensive trucks. And both of these, I would say, did not do great on this comparison. But the Ram just edged out just slightly, even though it scraped its steps. So the way I would improve the Ram is I would give it a slightly bigger tire, maybe a 33. Maybe you can do it aftermarket. It would improve this truck tremendously. If you remove the side steps, you would gain another level of capability. And the Titan, I would just give it a leveling kit. Maybe just a little taller nose and it would be just fine. So there you have it. Go back to tfloffroad.com for all the latest news views and real-world reviews and also tfl-studios.com for all things automotive.